Hey everyone, I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope the Holy Spirit is dwelling in your life, showing you the right path. For Jesus is coming soon and he's coming for his church. And that's why we need to be ready and alert. For sin is everywhere and evil is everywhere. That's why we need to do the best we can to depart from evil. To not walk the transgressions away, but walk the righteous way. That's what it's all about. Because what Christ did on the cross for our sins. Don't practice iniquity. It says in the Bible that there will be no more sacrifices left if you practice iniquity. Because you don't care that you put it on Jesus. See, when you depart from evil, you love Jesus because you don't want to put any more evil on him. You want to say, God, I want you first. I love you. I want to do the best I can to put righteousness in my life. And that's what it's about. He came to die for our sins so we're able to have a personal relationship with him. And I'm going to tell you all, if you're listening today, if you have a single doubt in your heart or just something that is not feeling good in your heart, that you don't are not right with God, you're not full with God on an everyday daily basis. I'm going to ask you all to pray with me at the end of the video. And not only that, I'm going to ask you to commit yourself to Christ again. It's always important to love Christ. For Christ wants your heart. So you may go to heaven with him one day. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And whoever so believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the true purpose of God's word. And that is the true purpose of getting to heaven. That's what it's all about. Yesterday we talked about mocking the Holy Spirit. How we cannot be mocking the Holy Spirit. How the Holy Spirit wants us to do good things that it tells us through our conscience and throughout our life, um, the good and the bad that we should do. We shouldn't do any bad, but we should do this good. The bad that we're doing, that the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit is reminding us to go down this path. See, that's the struggle with the sinners in the world is that we sometimes, we don't get our 100% to God. And that's sometimes a problem throughout our life. Jesus is there to help though, and the Holy Spirit is there to help. That's why we can't call the Holy Spirit a mistaken Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us 100%. And it's God's Spirit we shouldn't be calling in the devil. For it says in the Bible that mocking and blaspheming against the Holy Spirit is an unforgiven sin. It cannot be forgiven because you're basically calling God's Spirit the devil and you got to be very careful on these evil things that God wants us not to do for transgressions for adultery disobeying the Ten Commandments saying the Lord's name in vain having other gods before him putting him last in your life and I see throughout the nations people doing that all the time TikTok, Snapchat Twitter Facebook all this stuff YouTube can be evil too now we can use those things to do good but 95% of the time it's used in a perversion in an evil way we have a lot of kids out there that are being brainwashed and they're being taken by Satan himself and that's why as we as Christians we need to set an example we need to love them and pray for the ones that hate us for they can be saved just like we were saved it says in the Bible that if we forgive others, Jesus will forgive us. If we don't forgive others, Jesus won't forgive us. Because when we, when we were lost in sin and transgressions, we weren't forgiving others. We were against God. But as soon as we turned to God, He forgave us for our sins and our lives changed. So we need to pray every day for the lost so that may happen to them too just like it happened to us. Remember for, don't take the stick out of your brother's eye before you take the stick out of your own eye because your sins can be like crazy in your life and you don't even realize it. So don't be judging anyone for God is the only judge. And yesterday we also talked about how there would be no more sacrifice for sin if you practice iniquity all the time because you're basically saying Jesus not true. Jesus 
I don't care if I put any more sins on you. So depart from me. Now today we're going to be in the Old Testament and we're going to be talking about Noah and the ark. This is a very important story that's actually very popular in the Bible, but some people are mistaken about what God's trying to tell us here about Noah and the ark. See, what God did is He told Noah and uh, his family and the animals to go on town that ship to, to be saved from the flood because God decided to flood the earth. If everybody can go to Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, and read with me, please. And it says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come though, and all thy house unto the ark. For they have seen righteousness before me in this generation. O every clean beast, thou shalt take though thy by sevens, the male and his female and of beast, that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Listen to what this verse says verse um, 1 says in chapter 7. Listen to what it says. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come though in all thy house unto the ark, for they have seen righteousness before me in this generation. Now we can see here that God is talking to Noah here. But if you let the Holy Spirit speak through your mind, God's telling us here that this is the only people who decide to follow God in this generation and throughout the world. Throughout all the world, all the people are worshiping idols, they're ignoring God, they're doing evil things, they're doing abominations, they're blaspheming against God. But Noah is the only one and his family is the only one that understands. And we have a nation today and we have people in this world that are falling into the same situation. They're falling into worshiping idols and falling into worshiping things that are not of God. Abominations and transgressions, these things that God wants us to understand that it's not the right path. And that's why we as Christians that we need to help the broken generations and the broken people in our life. Just like God helped us when we were broken. We are just as bad as them because we're all sinners. We all need God's grace. In Jesus for Jesus died on the cross for our sins so we're able to have a personal relationship to live for him throughout our lives even though Satan and his demons might tempt us one day but with God there's help we can see here in verse 3 it says "O fowls also of the air by seven the male and the female to keep seed he's telling Noah to, to get these animals and these people to keep see keep them alive. So this is the only nation that understands. This is the only um, people that understand. We could see that God is telling them that do not get rid of the animals. Do not get rid of anything. Keep your family. Because this is the only generation that's left. All the other generations that are throughout the world are worshiping idols all the other people and nations are worshiping idols they're not following God they're the only ones that understand so we can see that God wants the world to flourish but 99% of the world does not want to flourish and that's why God wants this one family to live but not these 99% to live just because of their disobedience now I know what some people might think they might say that God's grace, if He was such a loving God, why will He destroy the world? It's not God's fault that the, the world's going to be flooded. It's our fault because of our transgressions and our disobedience against God. See, before I became a Christian, I was broken. I was lost. I was worshiping idols. I was practicing sin. But because I was forgiven, my life has changed. Now my life has been more challenging, but it's also been more joyful and awesome. Had a lot more fun. I've gotten a lot out of many sins. And I have a lot of temptation. Because I've decided to open the door and let God walk in and push Satan out. But we could see here that 99% of the world has Satan in their lives. 
and they're keeping God out. Noah is the only family that truly lets God into the house. And we can see here, it says in verse 4, For yet seven days I'll cause it to rain. Seven days. Upon the earthly forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. So God's talking about all these people that are ignoring Him. All these people that are departing from His understanding and His powerful perfection word. That the world's going to be flooded with so much rain. The rain of God. Now God does not want this to happen. But because God wants the world to be a refresh. He decided to choose Noah and his family to be the only ones because they're the only ones that understand. See, that God talks about repentance throughout life. He gave his son to die for our sins and repentance is there. You can choose to follow God anything you want. But the things of the world and sin is a lot easier than following God because you are just able to do it instantly. See, that's what Satan wants. He says, hey, just keep on sinning. Keep on taking this next overdose. Keep on watching this perversion and listening to perversion on the internet. Keep on listening to these evil things that are not of God. That's what Satan wants. He just, Satan says, just take more of that. Until, until you take more and more and more of it. And then you die and it's too late. Satan has took so many lives throughout this world. He has killed more people than anybody has throughout years and generations and nations and throughout the history of the world. Now Satan does not make you make sins, but he tempts you. See, Satan was there in the Garden of Eden and he was tempting Eve right Adam and Eve he was tempting Adam and Eve and Adam and Eve decided to fall for the temptation and they committed the sin while God told them not to see the same thing is happening today is that that we listen to the temptation of Satan and then we fall for the sin and we commit the sin I'm telling you all it says in the Bible in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 14 for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good, whether it be evil. So everything that comes out of your mouth has perversion. You will be judged for it. But if you change to God, those good things and rewards, you'll get rewards. See, see, the thing is, is when you are a believer in Christ, you go to heaven because you follow him. You you are forgiven for your sins. So when you go to heaven, you'll be judged. But it's not like you're going to have sorrow upon your heart. You're going to get judged, but then you're going to get rewards, and then you're going to live eternity with God. And that's what it's all about. And we can see here in verse 6, and says, Noah was 600 years old. That back then, they lived thousands and 600 years old. That's something that you probably learned today. They lived thousands of years. Now, God promised death, but He didn't promise death instantly. See, sin is everywhere, and sin and the curse is the reason why we die, because we committed the sin. It says in verse 7, And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons, wives, with him, into the ark, because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts, of beasts that are not clean, and fowls, and everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went into it too, unto the Noah, unto the ark, and the male and the female, as God has commanded Noah. And it came to pass every seven days that the water of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month of the seventh day of the month, the same day were all. The foundation of the great deep broken, and the windows of heaven were open. And the rain was open early, fourthly days and forty nights. And the selfsame day entered Noah. Shem and Ham and Chapheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with him, and the dark and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle, cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. 
and every fowl after his kind and every bird of every sort. So God's telling Noah all the creation and love that he has created for us. He's telling that every single type to put it in the ark, to put a female and a male in there so that the world keeps flourishing. See, God always wants a restart in your life. What God's teaching us here in Noah and the ark is that he's teaching us here to have a restart in our life. See, most people will look at the Noah and the Ark story and say, well, yeah, God just wanted this, this family to survive, that the whole world was evil except this family. Yeah, it's about that, but it's also about having a restart. See, God wanted this world to, to refresh, to restart. See, when you become a Christian, you, you put the old ways away and you, you restart your life. You say, I'm going to start restarting my life, and I'm going to put my life and put my eyes toward God. That's what God's trying to teach us here. Then that's the reason why he wiped out the earth. So there's a restart that the evil and the evil of the idols are gone. That the generation of Noah that flourishes in God, that righteousness is a dwelling upon the earth. See, God always wants a relationship with us, but we keep ignoring it. We keep following sin. And people are ignoring it every day with their perversion and all kinds of evil things that are not with God. They're with Satan. See, Satan will brainwash you and most people don't even realize. And I'm telling you not to hurt you all. I'm telling you the truth. See, some people don't, don't take the truth. See, sometimes people need to know what's wrong with them. People need to know what's, what's wrong. It's sin. It's Satan. It's a temptation. It's the evil things that come into the heart and soul to destroy your life. That is what God wants us to understand. Is that we need to restart our life. Repentance. And they went into Noah and to them and the ark and to all the flesh wherein was the breath of life. And they that went in and the male and the female flesh as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him up. You know, shut him in. I meant and the flood was forty days upon the earth, water increased, and bare upon the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the earth face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered, because you could see here that the evil has been destroyed. And when you skip to verse 23, it says, Every living substance was destroyed, which is upon the face of the ground. Both men and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl and of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained. It says Noah was the only one who remained alive, the only righteous family. And they that were with him in the ark, and the waters prevailed upon the earth in 150 days. So the same thing happens today. When God says that Noah is the only one who remains, it's because that is the only one who trusts Him. See, there's people out here today, and they think that Jesus isn't coming, and Jesus is coming real soon. It says in the Bible that Jesus is coming in a twinkle of an eye. That means He's going to come so fast that I blink right now, that it will be faster in the blink, and that the people that believe in Him the church, they'll rot, the, the dead will rise first and go up to heaven and the world won't even realize it. Jesus is coming for his church because he doesn't want us to feel the torture of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is always getting closer and closer every day. We don't know the time and hour. Did you know that we don't know when Jesus is coming back? Did you know that Jesus and the angels don't even know? the date or time you know God is the only one who knows when Jesus is coming for the church it says in the Bible that Jesus is coming as a helper a savior to save everyone that we're of the bribe we are the church he says that he's gonna have the seven churches in his hand and he's gonna pick them up and save them I'm gonna ask you all today are you gonna be part of the church are you gonna be part of heaven one day 
or no, you're not deciding to restart and repent from your sins. You decide to go with the flood and go with the evil nations instead of going with the family of Noah. I don't know how your life works. But all I can tell you is that God and Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. We're all sinners, we're all dying flesh, and there's no way we can enter the kingdom of heaven unless we turn to Jesus Christ and restart our life. Now listen to what this verse says in verse 9. In chapter, We're going to go to chapter 9, please. And we are going to go to verse 10. I mean 11. The chapter 9 of Genesis, verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. God promises that the world will never be destroyed by a flood again. But listen to this. He says that he promises that all flesh be cut off anymore. That all flesh won't be cut off. So God mentions Jesus Christ here a little bit. You think about it. See, throughout the Old Testament and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, God talks about destroying nations. Now we see here that God promises He'll never destroy the world, or He'll never flood the world again. I w and He says, I will establish my covenant with you, with the people, that He will change your life, that a restart will be following God, that repentance brings to God. Neither shall all flesh be cut off, all humans be killed and um, taken off the earth any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. God promises here that he'll never destroy and flood the earth again. Now, God is mentioning Jesus here because Jesus came to give us the chance to have a relationship with God. So God did not promise, no, he, pro sorry about that, he promised to not flood the earth again, but he never said that he will destroy nations. And that's why in Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, these nations are being destroyed for their idols, their transgressions, their abominations, their blasphemy against God, and God just keeps destroying these nations. Now, these nations just keep being destroyed and destroyed and destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah was one. That is a nation. Um, Jerusalem has been destroyed. Babylon has been destroyed. Moab has been destroyed. All these nations have been destroyed upon God. Now, God just kept destroying these nations, but the evil and the wickedness kept coming. So God says, hey, I promised I'm never going to destroy the world again with the flood. So instead of destroying the world with the flood and bring the evil away, Jesus Christ is coming to save the world. That's what God said. He said, I'm not going to destroy the world anymore, but I will destroy nations. And he says, because nations I have destroyed are not helping changing people's lives. Jesus Christ. See, God destroyed nations, and He did help lives. He did save lives. But the whole world wasn't saved. So now there's Jesus Christ, and God says, it's up to you. Either you want to go to hell or heaven. If you believe in my Son, Jesus Christ, you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But if you not, if you decide to go with idols and fake gods, you shall go into hell for eternity. Now, I'm going to ask you all a question. Do you know how bad hell is? Hell is a place where there's everlasting fire. You are going to be in a fire, but you'll never die. See, it says in the Bible that your soul will live forever. Your body, the things that you do for this world are not don't matter because they are not spiritual. They will not get you anywhere. That's why it's saying it's important to restore your, your actions up to God. Because when we restore your actions up to God and you put your trust in God, and you will get rewards for eternity. And that's why we shouldn't be worshiping money or our phones or Snapchat or TikTok 
all those things that are evil upon God. All those things that are not of God. And God saying that we need to look upon Him. Hell is so bad that you will literally feel, imagine yourself, you will be in a fire and feel the pain of being burned, but you'll never die. Now that's how bad hell is. So I'm going to ask you all watching today, I'm going to ask you all, please listen. The bottom of your soul and heart, I'm asking you this right now. Are you heading to hell? Or are you heading to heaven? Are you sure that you've been saved by Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ? Are you forgiven for your sins? If you're not, pray with me right now. Lord, I thank you for your love upon this world. You told us about the story of Noah and the ark, and you told us why you destroyed the world. You destroyed the world to get rid of the wickedness and to bring righteousness for them. Noah and his family was the only one to understand you. Help us that are watching, help us to understand your son Jesus Christ, to love him and to be forgiven for our sins. For all sinners, we all need your grace and love and your mercy. And Lord, I ask that you lead these people down the right path, just like you've been leading me down the right path. These broken hearts and these broken souls, I ask in your son Jesus Christ that you cast the sin and the transgressions out of their lives and that you show them the path of victory. Even though sin and evil might come their way and temptation might come their way and persecution might come their way, you promise them everlasting lives and rewards in heaven. And Lord, help us to store up things for you, to do it for you, not for us. For the things of the world will perish and the things that we do for the world will perish. Your high education and the things of the world will not get you to heaven, but God will. Even though education is important, but it, your soul is a lot more important because it's everlasting. And Lord, I ask that you touch all the hearts here that are watching today. Please touch their hearts, for they need Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I thank you for watching. Today we learned that Noah and the ark is explaining that we need a restart. We need a refresh in our lives. If your sin is going like crazy in your life, you need refresh. And there's one word that will change your life. And his name is Jesus. Trust in him. Rely on him. Stay in the word of God for it's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing him into dividing a center of a soul and spirit. Remember that. Your soul is important. Store up things in heaven. Love your enemies. And do what God asks you to do. Ignore Satan. And pray for this broken nation. Pray that we as a nation, we look to God. That we stay away from evil things that are not from God. Everything in the word of God is perfect. But sin is very real. Stay away from adulterousness. Stay away from saying... God in vain. Stay away from breaking the Ten Commandments and breaking His laws. If there's anything in the Bible that talks about being evil, you better honor it. Because if you practice those sins, there shall be no more sacrifices for any of us. Because your sins are always being practiced. Love the Lord with all your heart and depart from evil, and you shall be saved. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding and always acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. That's what we need to do. God bless. Have a good day. Jesus loves you. He wants your life. And let your life be refreshed just like Noah and his family was saved because they decided to understand that God is the only help and strength. God bless. Have a good day. Love your enemies. Show them an example. For this is the power of Jesus and his word.